Well, for more, I'm joined live by Simon Michelle over at Fig Security. Simon, thanks so much for joining us. These comments from uh, Dudley, I mean, they, they certainly would have had a, a, quite a bearing on the market uh, on Friday. I mean, do you agree with some of those comments that we really shouldn't be talking about negative interest rates at the moment, that the U.S. economy does actually have some, some pretty good, strong momentum? Morning, Leanne. Well, uh, goodness gracious, a couple of months and uh, we've got uh, the U.S. now talking about negative interest rates. So, uh, look, it's interesting if you have a look at the U.S. Treasury curve or US Treasury rates from sort of two years out to 30 years that's down about half of a half a percentage uh, half, half percent from when uh, they tightened back in December so the market has certainly pushed those rates lower uh, over that time and uh, now we have uh, US uh, Fed members having to come out and uh, dismiss the uh, possibility of negative interest rates uh, in a tightening cycle. So very interesting. I think that's largely driven obviously by what we've seen in, the, in uh, Japan with the Bank of Japan moving in a negative and we're expecting further action from the ECB as well. Um, I guess, you know, there's been a lot of talk about this recession potentially happening in the, in the United States. We did, however, on Friday see better than expected retail sales data coming through, which certainly, I guess, helped to calm some, some of that exaggerated talk about, about that recession. Um, how much did that add, I get those retail sales, I mean, how much did that add to those, those interest rate moves? You mentioned that rebound there from, from last week's lows. Look, I think it was definitely uh, the key driver was retail sales. I think add on to that the jump in the oil price we saw as well, that took a little bit of pressure off and uh, drove a more positive sentiment, especially across uh, more risky assets. But, uh, you know, that U.S. Uh, yield curve, uh, that Treasury curve, again, uh, you know, reached a low of around about a quarter percent above the low it reached post the GFC. So, you know, we're down at the, the lowest levels we've seen post the GFC, and that's not a good sign. And I think that's why we're starting to hear this uh, talk about uh, recession. I don't think we're anywhere near that. I think we've got very positive uh, some positive trends in the US uh, but I think the challenge for them is you know being in a tightening uh, cycle when you've got the rest of the globe working against you and making that even more difficult by continuing to lower rates uh, putting a lot of pressure on the US dollar. Um. Speaking of, I guess, pressure, Mario Draghi, I mean, it's really going to be a central bank focus this week, isn't it? And we know that markets really have been responding, uh, I guess, uh, or paying so much attention to what these central banks have to say. Mario Draghi speaking out tonight, I believe. Um, is he expected to, to really feed those market expectations that we'll see the ECB uh, easing policy in March? Look, I think it's got quite a task, uh, Leanne, especially considering the volatility we saw also in bank equity prices, European bank equity prices last week and uh, some of the uh, widening in spreads we saw on uh, some European sovereign issuers, some of the European governments over there. So it's a bigger issue now than just, uh, you know, further possible ECB uh, bond buying action, for example, uh, extending the package, uh, increasing the volume. Uh, you know, Mario Draghi did come out at the beginning of the year when we saw this volatility and said, you know, the ECB will... Uh, look to add further support if needed. That was flying on the back of a commentary in December, uh, just in the lead up to when we saw that US Fed move, where he said he was pretty happy and we didn't see any further measures come out. So, you know, big turnaround there in Europe, where I think the uh, market will be expecting some uh, further moves by Mario Draghi, uh, some further commentary, because they are starting to lose a little bit of faith in the ongoing, you know, we'll do everything it takes. Uh, and that was reflected in the deterioration we saw last week. Mm. Well, speaking of central banks, um, we have uh, FOMC minutes due out, I believe, Wednesday across in the US, but of course RBA minutes due out tomorrow here locally. i um, been hearing recently from, from Glenn Stevens basically, mm. I guess, reassuring that we are seeing gradual improvement in our local uh, economy. Do you think we're likely to see any clues, I guess, as to whether that easing bias is likely to translate into an easing anytime soon? Look, interesting, uh, Leanne. I mean, we saw Glenn Stevens uh, at a parliamentary committee uh, on Friday, so he got a little bit of an idea of, of what he's thinking, and he very much stuck to, uh, stuck to message there. I think, uh, you know, while the market's certainly building in the possibility of further rate cut, given the global uh, environment at the moment, uh, I think it's very prudent for the RBA to continue to uh, note that should it be required, they will... Uh, follow other central banks and, and lower rates. Uh, having said that, I think that we are seeing some good positive trends in the uh, Australian economy, uh, especially in that tr transition from a high mining capex into more sort of consumer growth. You know, there's some positive trends there. Employment is looking quite good. So I think the RBA is happy to sort of sit back 
and uh, let the rest of the world work it out and, uh, you know, yeah, just sit quietly and, uh, you know, wait and see uh, what we get from the US, what we, we get from the ECB. But, uh, you know, I think everything's looking pretty pretty, uh, pretty good for the uh, Aussie at the moment. Mm. Yeah, certainly a, a good thing. All right, Simon, we'll leave it there. Thanks so much for joining us. Have a lovely day, Leanne. Thank you. Simon, Michelle joining us there. Uh, of course,